Hi, I'm Little Piggy and welcome to my channel. Firstly, I'd love to say thank you so much for all of you who have subscribed to my channel. One of my goals was to reach 50 subscribers by the end of the year and you've did it, you've done it, you did the things guys and I'm so thankful to all of you who have clicked the subscribe button. I hope we can grow in this channel, grow in our pursuit of science and pursuit of love of science and grow as scientists in general. Just I am so excited and thankful and I love you all. Thank you so much. As you can see, or like not see, I've tried to add two more rocks to my rock of subscribers. I'll put a video right here somewhere kind of showing <laughs> the rock, the feet, the wall. But there it is. And yeah, thank you guys again so much. So today's video, we're going to talk about jobs you can get with a human life sciences degree. Now, I need to say this and we'll say it in a sing-song way. Look, we live in South Africa, okay? Okay. So we know that there's kind of like an unemployment issue going on in this country right now. So regardless of what degree you do or whatever you do, even if it's not human life sciences, Getting a job outside university may not be the easiest thing to do. And this is me speaking as an unemployed master student. I know. <laughs> okay, I get the anxieties of not being employed as well. But the jobs that I've chosen for this video are jobs that I feel are more realistic to obtain in South Africa due to our resources, due to our entities that qualify jobs. For example like the hpa like the hpsa as well as i think it's jobs that i think will have a wider variety of people being interested in them i've separated these six jobs into two groups one being academia and one being medical research but to be clear the jobs that i say in these two groups are not the only jobs available within these two groups but these are the jobs that I think are more realistic to get within South Africa and human life sciences, as well as jobs that perhaps will give me in, in tra inside training, as well as not being limited to having extremely high levels of education like PhD or whatever. So with that being said, let's get into the video and let's start. So let's start with academia. So within academia, the three jobs that I've chosen or like i'm suggesting to do if you're thinking that academia might be something that you'd want to to do is being a life sciences teacher being a medical scientific editor and being an assistant researcher now these three jobs vary in perhaps level of education you need to do to have them but all of them you need at least a secondary level of education besides having your undergrad with them so when it comes to being a teacher, you need something called a PDEG. Hi there, is Editing Lita here coming to tell you that I'm an idiot. <laughs> this whole video, this whole time I've been saying PDGE, but it's actually PGDE. So sorry about that. <laughs> and I also made a mistake with the HPCSA. I keep on saying the HPSA and forgetting the C. So again sorry about that but hope you're enjoying the video so far and thank you which is basically a, a postgrad diploma in education this will allow you to become a registered teacher and able to be an employable teacher if you have a human life sciences background with your teaching diploma it actually allows you to become a teacher in more affluent schools i would say because then you kind of are a bit upper than a normal than a person with the traditional route of being a teacher because now you have like a whole scientific background behind you people who do a piece a p i'm gonna mess up this thing all the damn time focus okay a person someone who does a p a pd a pdge someone who does that usually either falls into one or two groups they either do it as a way to have a sustainable income while they're trying to figure out what they want to do or they actually end up loving being a teacher and becomes their main source of career for the rest of their lives either way it is a guarantee oh, there's nothing as a guarantee in south africa but it's out of the all the jobs it's the most guaranteeable <laughs> to have a job within the sector but yet again you're not like bound by it so it's only one option you can have the second option being a medical scientific editor is that you are an editor for articles, any publications that involve science 
or medicine and basically what you do is that you edit you see for grammar you see for scientific medical accuracy you see for how misleading or how it's perceived through a, like a public's eye and you try to alter or edit it in a way that can be digestible to a person who's like or someone who like may not know science but you try to make science more ad 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 edible adaptable to them this stream is if you're a person who actually really loves language and love linguistics and love kind of the beauty of language and trying to make people understand science in the more common way i think this would be a very good way for you or good stream for you to do the third dream being a research assistant being a research assistant means that you kind of maybe need to know exactly what type of research you want to do and kind of want to be part of a specific type of group one thing that could be beneficial for you to do if you want to be a research assistant is to build connections during your undergrad years build connections with your lecturers especially the ones that you want to be in their research groups so that will allow you to kind of have a foot in already so when you do your honors and do your masters you really start building research earlier in your academic career allowing you to be able to be a front runner compared to other types of medical researchers so research assistant is basically assisting the main researcher when it comes to their research topics so this could mean running um lab work writing um organizing all that stuff so there's a lot of admin there's a lot of research there's a lot of lab work it's a hectic job but it's a paying job <laughs> one of the three academia ones that i said right now of list being a life science teacher as the most guaranteeable and our list of being a research assistant is the most one that's still linked to science now if you're going to the medical research realm the three that i have chosen that are more of a guarantee are being a genetic counselor being a medical scientist and being a medical representative so with being a genetic counsellor, you're basically assisting people and supporting people in whether or not they should do any genetic testings that involves the risk of having genetic um, diseases or inheritory diseases. So you're like a social worker slash a geneticist when you do kind of this research. For you to be able to become a genetic counsellor, you firstly need to make sure that the major that you choose in your undergrad year is genetics, of course as well as doing your honors in genetics of course and then doing your masters in genetic counseling there are two universities who provide a masters in genetic counseling and that's uct and it so those are the two schools that you look for if you think genetic counseling may be something that you'd like to do this is again a, a course that is registered by the hpsa so you become a registered health professional if you become a genetic counselor so the fact that it's registered um career that means it's something that is in demand and it's something that is recognized by the South African government and the South African Medical Association so you have more likely to able to create a career within this this job <laughs> the second thing that you can be is a medical scientist so being a medical scientist you have to do your honors and then you can become and then you can do an internship in two institutions, which are the National Institution of Communicable Disease as well as Pathcare. These two institutions allow internships for medical scientists. And after that, you can become a registered medical scientist through again the HSP, the HPSA, and you can become a registered medical scientist. So what a medical scientist does basically is being part of the huger or the large medical crew and help with diagnosing, treating, management of disease progression you are kind of like a go between between perhaps the pathologist and the doctor because you're kind of interacting with those two fields a lot so you kind of like a person who has to be kind of a jack of all trades understanding about progression of disease understanding di di like diagnostic techniques understanding all of those things to become part of that field it seems like a lot of fun actually I'm not gonna and the third job that you can get within the medical research sphere is becoming a medical representative. Now, honestly, being a medical representative is the usually the default that a lot of kids who do human life sciences go into. Um, it's kind of like a thing that they really love having kids who have some sort of science background behind them. They like to look more of kids who have some sort of biochemistry background because if you do biochemistry you are more efficient to doing lab works like 
wasting blood things or um other sorts of lab work i didn't do i didn't do biochemistry i did anatomy but they usually like kids who have biochemistry because it's show it's kind of a guarantee that they did some sort of lab techniques during their undergrad year so when you are a medical representative you are basically helping a company sell specific medicine um, equipment technique to different hospitals or surgeons or pharmacists now i know you may be thinking that you don't want to really do anything in retail and that that does not sound interesting to you however there are medical representatives who provide surgeons with surgical equipment and techniques and you actually have to be part of the surgery to help the surgeon how to tell them how to use the equipment or how to install this new um, surgical device into the patient properly and stuff like that so it's kind of an exciting um way when it comes to that kind of degree or that type of career but again same with like being being a life science teacher it seems like it never it's like a long-term thing for people who want to do things that are more science-based so yeah there's usually like a way for people to get money on the go after their degree so yeah those are the six careers that i think are the most realistic when it comes to being a human life sciences graduate um and yet again there are actually many more jobs you can get with a human life sciences degree that i can tell you about but let me know if you want to hear more about those jobs in the comments by liking this video and also telling me what videos would you like to hear from me next um it's summertime soon and i'm almost done with my <laughs> with my year so i actually can provide more fun context and yeah i should really love you guys to stick around but yet again thank you so much for subscribing again and thank you so much for watching this video um hope to see you soon bye